<laughs> all right, we have number 86, Black yeah, Panther, uh, Buckmeister's favorite character of all time, directed by the, uh, Ryan Coogler. This is the Chadwick, Bo Chadwick Boseman's second appearance in the MCU after Civil War. Um, it's, too, it's, it's, it's too high on this list. 86 is too high. All right. Uh, again, I love this movie, but, you know, with the campaign that I'm on and everything, there's a lot of problems that come in this movie as a comic book fan. And uh, that, some of that stuff is transferred over to audiences as well. Like, if they use more of the comic book lore, the movie would look smarter as a movie. Chadwick's performance is amazing. I think, I think of the American actors, he nails the African accent the most and whatever. And the messaging of the movie is kind of all right. It's just that they make they make T'Challa very reactive, and that's a problem because he's very much being told what to do throughout the whole movie. I still think it's it, it's it's kind of still my favorite uh, Marvel movie outside of Winter Soldier. It's between this and Winter Soldier, but like to put it on eighty six of the greatest hundred movies of all time, I I I would have this uh, I would have this at like nine. Um, mm, 90? Maybe I'd move it down 10 spaces, like 96 or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, favorite moment? I never freeze. <laughs> yeah, that would be it. <laughs> okay. Um, Rob? Oh, God, I feel bad. I feel so fucking bad. Because, first of all, number one, just so I can couch my, my opinion, I'm going to say this movie is iconic. And it's impactful. It showed that, yes, first of all, Blade, first of all, showed that black people can hold a Marvel franchise. So let's, before we even get there, I feel like black, um, Blade set the pathway, but Black Panther is the one that built an entire highway over it. Like, do you know what I mean? Do you know what right. I mean? So I feel like Black Panther is, it did amazing things. Having said that, it's a little overrated. <laughs> I'm not that big a fan of this movie at all. Um, I feel like there are great scenes within the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I personally enjoy the the fights between um, Chadwick Boseman and um, Michael B. The Jordan. There we go, Michael B. Jordan. I thought that was great. I thought Michael B. Jordan pulled in a... It's not his best performance. I think Creed is a better performance, in my opinion. Um, but I think it's still a good performance by Michael B. Jordan. Great performance by... Um, hey, Chad Auntie. <laughs> Chad <You're Batwana. laughs> no, sometimes some of the linguists were all over the place. Dog. Like, like that, that woman at the beginning when we get to see King T'Chaka when he's young or whatever the face in Zungubani, and I was like, okay, you did not practice at all. <laughs> Just hang around in Cape Town for like 10 minutes, guys. Oh, oh like my you, God. Again, I still, think this is, I still think this is a wonderful movie. I still think it's got a lot of rewatch ability. Um, I, I, just, I just think that it was like because of where we are with this franchise, it's kind of lost some of its sheen. Because mm -hmm. it was a great start, mm -hmm. but it's a terrible finish if that's supposed to be where the character ends up or whatever the yeah. case is. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Rob. Uh, I think I feel like I disturbed you, man. Sorry. Please continue. <laughs> um, okay, I was gonna say, um, there's some good moments in it, but I feel like this we've discussed this before we talk about like the sum of parts make a better product. To me, I feel like the sum of parts make a worse product. There's good objects here. But the mm -hmm. overall is not as good as it should be. And of course, we nowadays, it's basically a film school topic talking about the problems with the graphic design of the final fight. I feel like that's almost mm -hmm. a stain in the movie's history. Yeah, uh, but I mean, yeah. which it's kind of hard to hold. For me, it's kind of hard to hold that against the movie because mm -hmm. of um, what they said when the, when the VFX artists came out. Because basically, mm -hmm. they had a crazy crunch time. Like, they literally yeah. had no time to actually work on the vfx mm. so it was just kind of, to me it was more of an indictment on marvel studios mm. and their production process than it was a slight against the movie i mean again if you want to hold it against the movie you have every right they put it in yeah. the movie so it's the end result, for critique. Yes. it's the end result but i'm just saying for me i think the thing is i have more issues with this as a comic book fan than as a mm. movie than as a movie goer because That's like there's there's critics that there's critiques that came out and I'm just like if they stuck to the law they could have fought back against this. Like somebody was like, 
if they've all got the heart-shaped herb, why aren't they just giving it to everybody? And, like, one of the reasons is, is that in the comic books, you have to be of the bloodline of Bashenga to actually take the, to take the herb. Anyone else who takes it gets a heart attack and dies. So see, it, it was that, like... Yeah, see, that makes sense. See, that, see, stuff like that makes sense, because logic, what you could do logically is you show someone else trying to take it, and they drop dead, and you're like, oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? You could yeah. actually show that, but, but it, they didn't. No, I like guess that's, that, that's it should have been that, someone that's not from Wakanda, because I guess the Wakandans would have known that. No, like in Wakanda, it's known, but like Killmonger in the comic books, he didn't know that. So when he right. challenged T'Challa, and basically he put T'Challa in a situation where he was always going to win, because if T'Challa kills him, he's a martyr. If he loses, then he's the chieftain. T'Challa's only option was to try and get this guy to give up, and he couldn't do it. And then basically he takes over, not takes over, he becomes chieftain, T'Challa still king, because those are separate things. And then what happens is, is that Killmonger basically passes the trials, he takes the heart-shaped herb, and then he dies. And then basically he gets revived again. Or he close to death or dies, something like that in the comic books. And then it was saying that, yeah, if you're not of the bloodline of Bashenga, you cannot take this herb. Like, you have to be of the bloodline of Bashenga. So that's why in the like that's why in the movies. I mean, at the time, obviously, I didn't think about it because I was just happy to see my guy on screen. But as we seen this franchise unfold, what kind of looks dumber and dumber every movie, <laughs> and it just it it's just like it just becomes more problematic. That's why, like for me, I'm not as fervent to defend this movie as I was before because like the problems are just escalating with the franchise. But again, I. St- I still love this movie, but I would not have it at 86. I'd probably have it at 96. See, now, that's um, interesting what he just said there. It's fascinating because, like, I feel like Man of Steel spent more energy setting up their world mm-hmm. than Black Panther did setting up its world. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, the effort they went into showing the world of the Kryptonians, it's all made up bullshit that, that that's not canon, but it it makes more sense than what we got in Black Panther. And what you just said right now, that sounds like um, Indiana Jones. Do you know what I mean? You know the first Indiana Jones movie with the, where the Nazis take the, the lost dog. Yeah. There we go. Where they take the thing and then they die. And then, you know, the right people. Like, that's such a cool idea. What you just described there sounds so much cooler than what we got, what we got actually. I almost feel well, bad. Well, if they actually read the comic books. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's my point. I feel like, I feel like they... I don't want to say they played it safe, but it feels like they played it safe for the investors, not no, the comic I, book I fans. Can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you exactly why they played it safe. Because also the whole idea of opening the borders mm-hmm. in the comic books, Killmonger is actually opposed to opening the borders. He was against the idea of opening the borders. <laughs> it was actually T'Challa's idea to open the borders. And then it made everybody in Wakanda upset that he was trying to share resources that belong to Wakanda. So that's why this movie, like, the the whole thing is they make T'Challa like he has to be indecisive because they feel like that's his character arc. When his character arc is supposed to be him conflicted between being a king and a superhero. Because he very much operates like a superhero and then makes everybody forget that he's a king. And then he'll switch it up on everybody and act like a king. And everybody will be like, what are you doing? And he's like, my job. Peace out. Like one time he told the Avengers to his to their face. Yeah, I was spying on you guys. I joined you guys to spy on you because you're like some of the strongest beings on the planet. And I needed to have defense mechanisms against you. Oh, you don't like that? Too bad. I'm going back to my country. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Rob, do you have a favorite moment? Um, the casino scene. The, con- scene, the casino sequence is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm oh, like, I get every it. breath you take is mercy for me. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing where they're sitting, yeah, from the car with the spear. Um, I enjoyed all of that with the thing with Jiggy's gun. Just a blast. Good time. Um, yeah, so that's my favorite part. And yeah. uh, there's always, I've always had an issue with. Daniel Okuya's character, because from what I read from the comics, he's, first of all, he's T'Challa's best friend, and sometimes he's, like, in charge when T'Challa's not around. And yeah, I'm, I'm... Wakabi, Wakabi is the region, dude. Like, the thing is, what they, like, that's the thing where I'm saying, like, this is where the writers kind of disappointed me, because I think they just did not 
focus on the source material. Like they just kept, they they put people in places to serve specific functions for the story they were trying to tell instead of trying to adapt the the source material itself. Mm. Like Wakabi had to be the person that was going to betray T'Challa because Killmonger needed an in into the country yes. type of thing. So yeah. like they looked at the list of characters and they were like, it can't be a Dora. It can't be a this. It has to be this guy. No, and but like, why, you, why not use um, Winston Duke's character? What's his name again? Um, Baku. Because the Baku. thing is, when they saw what his name is, they saw Man Ape, and they were like, "We can't do that. We have to make this guy likable, because he also it has to fit the narrative of we had, we can't be using problematic names mm-hmm. in this Black Panther movie. That's why his whole character changed." Yeah, because for me, it's like, he's more loyal than Wakabi? How? Yeah. But anyway, no, I think uh, you guys... Mbaku's whole character changed because... But anyway, yeah. Like I, I said, said 96. That, that needs to be yeah. said. Um, oh, plus, plus extra. I pretty much agree with what you guys said. For me, I think the best version of T'Challa and Black Panther is in Civil War. Mm. Uh, I think after that, you don't really get the best of... Well, oh, that's because the, they they made him comic book accurate. Not comic book accurate, but they made him closer to his comic book counterpart. They made him a, a badass. You mean in Civil War? Yeah, in Civil War, yeah. he's closer to his comic book counterpart because, yeah. I mean, there's also things in Civil War, like the fact that he didn't kill Zemo or hit Zemo or, like, scratch Zemo, that was, like, because Black Panther fans, in the, in the comics, every time he's met the guy who killed his father, T'Challa kills that dude. <laughs> like, right. no matter what version you read, he kills him. Like, he's killed Claw at least three or four times. Right. He's like, why won't you stay dead? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. Um, favorite moment of mine. What are those? Well, it's one of my favorite moments. Uh, <laughs> delete that footage. <laughs> uh, all right, but I think we said uh, all we could here. Yeah. Uh, um, it does deserve to be on the list, but I, I it's, think it's it's, it's high. Um, it, it's, uh, it's yeah. high. The VFX, the VFX, yeah, were a serious problem for me. Even maybe, when maybe, 90, maybe maybe ninety, eighty six is a, is a bit high. I think it's not better than Pop Fiction for me. Yeah, and it's not better than Leon the Professional. So yeah, yeah it's misplaced. 